I don't do zygomatic or pterygoid implants in my practice ever. And I have no intentions of doing them. Let me tell you why. Right now in the industry, one of the hottest things is to take a course on doing these um, rather uh, technically complicated surgeries like zygomatics and pterygoids. And they have their place, to be honest, they have their place. But that frequency is so low, it is so low that it's not anywhere close to needing my attention. In other words, I can do, in my history of doing full arch, I've only had three patients that would have needed this type of treatment. In my entire career, not just like this year, but in my entire career, only three patients ever. Everyone else has been treated with root form implants. Everyone else in regular traditional work. And what that means is that if you know what you're looking for and you do a digital prosthodontic plan, starting with the end, backing into the implant in the vast preponderance of people, and I mean 99, probably 0.999% of the people, you can do root form implants and do a wonderful job with an all on X solution. You don't need these solutions. Now, they're, they're, they're popular right now, and what happens is, is it, so once you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? And so I see cases now where people are placing zygomatics or pterygoids on patients that could have gotten by with root form implants. Let me tell you how I know. There's a little known trick. If the patient has teeth, if they have remaining teeth, even if they have perio, but they have remaining teeth and they're a candidate for all an X, they're a candidate for root form implants. It's, it's, it's just, I, I've never seen anyone who's had teeth that I didn't have enough bone around an apical to those teeth to place implants, period. So recently, on the cover of one of our journal magazines, on one side were some, some pterygoid implants, on the other side were some root form implants. And what the cover said was the root form implants were the rescue solution to the pterygoids that had failed on that side. Now, guys, here's, here's how I think a little bit different. When I see somebody who opted to go with pterygoids and then when the pterygoids failed, they replaced the solution with root form implants, I say to myself, why didn't we start with the root form implants? They're, uh, they're, they're not nearly as technically complicated. It's not that there's a, a problem with these, these uh, pterygoids and, and, and zygomas. It's just that they're technically complicated. They require a skill set that's, that's, that's acquired. It's not readily available. So when I see that, I just say, wow, why take on all of that risk? Why have a hammer and make everything a nail? Right? So make sure that you're looking at these cases and doing the proper analysis. Don't just say, hey, I've took a course on doing a zygoma or a pterygoid, and eh, this is a little bit compromised. Let's go ahead and jump to that. That is a solution for people that are really, really atrophic. They have, they've been in a denture since they were 16. They're 65 years old, and they've got what looks like the old, mouth, uh, the, the old football mouth guard from the, you know, from the 1950s, the, little, the one that the kickers used to wear, the one bar. That's what the mandible looks like. Those are the kind of cases where you start saying, okay, we've got to do something different with this patient, right? But that is very, very rare in my practice. Now, what would happen if I do have somebody that shows up like that? It's real simple. I refer that case to somebody who does this all the time. It's not a practice. It's not a solution that I need in my practice because it's so rare. So just send that one out to a qualified surgeon. Let them do that case for you and be done with it because it's rare. It, you're not losing money. It's too rare for you to be losing money. What you're losing money on is taking an expensive course, learning how to do something that if you do properly, you're only going to do three times in your entire career. It's just not necessary. So hopefully that helps clarify why I will never need to do a zygoma or pterygoid in my practice. And root form implants are so predictable, especially now with our short wide implants. And now we even have short regular size implants that are coming out. The, the opportunities, the, the, the library of implants that we have to choose from are so broad, it gives us so many options that you can usually make these processes work, these cases work with root form implants. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, the Smile Engineer, helping you re-engineer your practice every day.